In section 2.7, we will start talking about z-score, and we will talk about this more in detail in future sections. The z-score represents the distance that a data value is from the mean in terms of the number of standard devi deviations. In other words, the z-score represents how many standard deviations, how many standard deviations above or below the mean a data value is. The formula for a z-score is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Z-scores usually have values between negative 2 and 2 and are rare when the values are more than positive or negative 3. Okay. So let's uh, find and interpret the z-score for, um, for the following data. We have a population mean mu equals to 3 and a standard deviation sigma equals to 2. Well, before we even apply the formula, let's, let's see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to draw a symmetric unimodal distribution. And we're told that our mean mu is equal to 3. Okay, so here's what a standard deviation sigma equal to 2 means. It means that if you start at the mean 3, one standard deviation is going to be 2. So if we start at the mean and we go one standard deviation, then our data value would be 5. Okay, another again, our standard deviation is 2. So if we go two standard deviations, we will have 7. So the value 5 is one standard deviation away from the mean. The data value of 7 is two standard deviations away from the mean. Remember, one standard deviation is equivalent to 2. So from 3 to 5, this is one standard deviation. From 5 to 7, this is two standard deviations. If you go the other way, Remember, our standard deviation is 2. So one standard deviation the other way, 3 minus 2, will give you 1, which means 1 is one standard deviation away from the mean. If we go another standard deviation, 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. So negative 1 is two standard deviations away from the mean. Let's apply the formula to find the z-score. The formula for the z-score, if you look at the previous slide, it's the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in this case, uh, we want to find the z-score of the data value x equals 7. So the z-score is going to be 7 minus the population mean, which is 3, divided by the standard deviation, which is 2. So 7 minus 3, that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now a z-score of 2, remember what the z-score represents. The z-score is how many standard deviations we are above or below the mean. So a z-score of 2, this means that the data value x equals 7 is 2 standard deviations. And since 2, this is a positive z-score, 2 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, This is the interpretation of it. And we can see that 7 is 1, 2 standard deviations above the mean, because each standard deviation is equal to 2. Here's another example. Let's say we have a, now we have a sample. Our sample mean is x bar equals 211. So again, if we were to draw this, our sample mean is going to be 11. Standard deviation, once again, is 2, which means one standard deviation, which is 2, will put us at 13, because remember, s equals to 2. If we go another standard deviation, this will give us 15. Going the other way, if we go one standard deviation to the left, or below the mean, this will give us 9. If you go two standard deviations, this will give us 7. If you go three standard deviations, this will give us 5. Let's find the z-score of x equals to 5. So by this, we should already know that 5 is 1, 2, 3, 
standard deviation is below the mean, but let's verify that. So based on our formula, the z-score is equal to 5, which is a data value, minus the mean, which is x bar, that's 11, divided by the standard deviation. So this will give us negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. A z-score of negative 3 means x equals 5 is 3 standard deviations because the z-score is negative. This time it will be 3 standard deviations below the mean. So the z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean, either above or below, a data value is. When a distribution is what we call normal, then 95% of the values are within two standard deviations. So it's either two standard deviations above or two standard deviations below the mean. Okay, in a normal distribution, most of the values, 95% of the values, fall within two standard deviations of the mean. This gives us a nice range of values which we would consider ordinary or usual. Anything beyond the two standard deviations is considered to be unusual since we see them less than 5% of the time. Okay, within two standard deviations, 95% of the values are going to fall. So anything that's beyond two standard deviations is considered to be unusual since it occurs less than 5% of the time. To determine a values, if a value is unusual, follow the following. Calculate the z-score and use the guide below. If the z-score is between negative 2 and positive 2, then this is considered to be usual. Okay, the usual values fall between two standard deviations of the mean. So the z-score is going to be between negative 2 and 2. Remember, the z-score tells you how many standard deviations from the mean a data value falls. So if a data value has a z-score between negative 2 and 2, it's considered to be usual. If a data value has a z-score of more than 2, then this is going to be unusual. Same thing over here. If data value falls um, below two standard deviations of the mean, then this is also considered to be unusual. Here's an example. A man measured his pulse rate to be 48 beats per minute. Is that pulse rate unusual? If the man, uh, if the adult male pulse rate is 63.7 beats per minute with a standard deviation of 10.3, so let's think about this. Okay, anytime you want to determine if a data value is unusual, we have to first calculate the z-score, and it's considered unusual if the z-score is more than plus or minus two. Well, I should say, sorry, I should say more than 2 or less than negative 2. Okay, so let's first calculate the z-score. The z-score is given by the data value. I'll always start with the data value. The data value is 48 beats per minute minus the mean, which is 67.3, divided by the standard deviation, which is 10.3, and this will give us the z-score. Okay, so if you calculate this, the z-score is going to be negative 1.87. Here's what this tells us. Okay, if we were to see this on a graph, the, the mean for males is 67.3 beats per minute. The, our, our subject, his heartbeat is 48 beats per minute, which is somewhere over here. Now, is that unusual? Well, the z-score for 48 is negative 1.87. Remember, if the z-score is between negative 2 and positive 2, then these values are, are considered to be usual. So the z-score of negative 1.87, since it's within two standard deviations, it is not unusual. Okay, this is not unusual since the z-score 
is within plus or minus 2, which means 48 beats per minute is within two standard deviations of the mean. So therefore, it's considered to be not unusual. Unusual would be if uh, the z-score was more than 2 or less than negative 2. Here's another example. On Brian's first calculus test, he scored 48 out of 100. The class average was 63.7 with a standard deviation of 7.2. Although Brian clearly scored below average, since the average was 63.7, he figures he will not drop the class unless his score is unusually low. How do you determine if a score is unusual? Calculate a z-score. So the z-score is Brian's score, which is 48, minus the mean, which is 63.7, divided by the standard deviation, which is 7.2. If you calculate this, this will give you negative 2.18. Now, negative 2.18, this z-score is, is considered to be unusual because it's not within two standard deviations. So Brian's score is unusually low. His score is unusually low since it's below two standard deviations. If it's below two standard deviations or above two standard deviations, then it's considered to be unusual. So since his score is unusually low, he should probably drop the class. Please do the following example. We're given a GPA uh, of, a, of a student, the mean school mean GPA and a standard deviation for, for two different students. Uh, figure out which student had the highest GPA when compared to his or her school. We will talk about skewed distributions and outliers in class. So please look over these, and we'll go over these in class.